Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of the DAN Show, and welcome to my latest 2022 NFL preview video. Today, I'm going to break down the Denver Broncos, and if you haven't seen one of my videos before, here's, here's how they work. First, I start off with three things I like about the Denver Broncos. Then, I'm going to go over three things I don't like about the Broncos. Then, I'm going to break down the schedule, go over the yearly win total odds, and at the end, I reveal if I am going to put action down on the Denver Broncos. Now, if this is your first time here and you like football, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Join the growing community of football fans that welcomes all 32 fan bases and football junkies. Now, three things I don't like about the Denver Broncos. The first thing is very obvious. It's uh, Russell Wilson. And uh, if Russell Wilson was the quarterback for the 2021 Denver Broncos, they go to the playoffs. Uh, the second thing I like is that along with Russell Wilson is that the Denver Broncos have a lot of skill position talent. Uh, I was just absolutely shocked when uh, Denver was able to re-sign Melvin Gordon. Uh, both Denver running backs, Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon, had exactly 203 carries last year. Both went over 900 yards rushing. Uh, we may see both running backs go over 1,000 yards rushing this year. It'd be the first time this has happened in a, in a long time. Now, if you're not aware of Javante Williams, this kid could be a superstar, but you may not view him as a top 10 running back because he is going to split carries with Melvin Gordon. Javante Williams is one of the best 10 running backs in football. He is that good. Uh, if Melvin Gordon wasn't on the team, he would put up Pro Bowl numbers. He would definitely go to a Pro Bowl. He has all the tools to be a superstar. And then the receiving core is loaded. Uh, Jerry Judy, who's been really nicked up his first two years in the NFL, has all the tools it takes to be a number one wide receiver. Then along with him, you got six foot four Cortland Sutton and six foot four Tim Patrick. Uh, both these guys have uh, pretty good speed and are eager for that Russell Wilson, a uh, great deep ball accuracy. And the third thing I like about the Denver Broncos is they have some studs on defense. Last year, Denver gave up the third fewest points in the National Football League. And I don't know if they're going to be as good as they were last year. Keep in mind, Vic Fangio was a longtime uh, defensive coach before he became a defensive coordinator, before he took over as the head coach of the Denver Broncos. Ed Donatel, the defensive coordinator, longtime, very well-respected, very good defensive coordinator. So the defense might take a step back, but you've got some absolute studs on this defense. Justin Simmons might be the best safety in football. Uh, if you're not a Broncos fan and you're, and you're thinking I'm exaggerating, I'm really not. This guy can do everything. This guy can blitz. This guy can cover. He gets lots of picks. He, he's physical against the run. This guy does absolutely everything. Uh, last year's second round pick, Patrick Sertan, uh, too. I remember watching his dad play. Uh, this guy is going to be a Pro Bowl corner. The question is when. He was a rookie last year. He might be a Pro Bowl corner this year. It might be next year. It's really just a matter of time and staying healthy. Uh, on, on the front seven, Bradley Chubb missed over half the season. Uh, this guy is a monster. I major man crush on uh, Bradley Chubb. Opposite Bradley uh, Chubb, uh, they signed Randy Gregory to a huge free agent deal. So you got two pass rushers and then they drafted Nick Benito, uh, really got a good draft pick here because uh, he could have gone much earlier in the draft. He's going to fit in on what the Broncos are going on defense perfectly. So really you, with these three outside linebackers, you got some really good pass rushers and you have multiple pass rushers, which is really key. So just to recap the three things I like about the Denver Broncos, Russell Wilson, uh, he has skill position talent surrounding him, and you got some studs on defense. Now, three things I don't like about the Denver Broncos. Uh, first off, all three things are connected to Denver being in the AFC West, and the AFC West is uh, widely regarded as the most difficult uh, division in the National Football League. So if you want to say uh, the AFC West is a brutal division and then three other things, then you would have four total. But I'm connecting these three things along with being in the brutal AFC West. So the first thing is the offensive line concerns, um, specifically on the right side. Now, uh, I'm really surprised Denver didn't do more in the draft and free agency to really shore up this offensive line. Uh, I'm making this video uh, late July, and Cam Fleming, who started four games uh, on the right side last year, was just re-signed, so he kind of figures into the situation. Uh, Billy Turner, more than likely, is your starting uh, right tackle when the season starts. He's currently on the pup list. Like I said, I'm making this video late 
uh, July. Uh, and, and no disrespect to Billy Turner, but that's not really your an ideal starter on the right tackle position. Now, on the right guard, our lads has third-round pick from last year, Quinn Ramirez starting. ESPN has Graham Glaslow. Uh, to be honest, neither are really ideal, but I will say this. Moneris is from a small school last year. He does have some upside and some potential, but he's got to show it now. And the reason why is that uh, all three AFC West opponents, while neither one of these three opponents have great defenses, all three of them have multiple studs on, on the defensive line and th- multiple pass rushing options. Kansas City has pro bowlers Chris Jones and Frank Clark plus first round pick uh, George Kaliftis. Uh, the Raiders just gave Max Crosby a boatload of money, which he deserved. And they got Chandler Jones on the opposite side. Uh, you got the Chargers who has Joey Bosa, and then they just created, traded for Khalil Mack. So you don't have just one guy you got to worry about. You have multiple guys you got to worry about, and you got multiple holes on your offensive line. Now, Russell Wilson started his first nine seasons without missing a game, but he missed three games last year, and he turns 34 in November. In the NFL, when you have a consecutive game streak broken at 33, it doesn't reset. Russell Wilson's not a lock to play every game this year. And when you have issues at multiple positions on your offensive line, this is magnified. And this is also double magnified by the second thing I don't like, and that is the inexperienced coaching staff. Denver not only has a uh, first-time head coach, they have a first-time offensive coordinator and a first-time defensive coordinator. Uh, I don't know this for an absolute fact, but I'm pretty sure uh, the Denver Broncos have the least experienced coaching staff in the NFL. And this works hand-in-hand with the third thing I don't like about the Denver Broncos, and that is expectations are Super Bowl or bust. Uh, Normally, when you finish dead last in the division, you're not thinking, hey, we're going to bring in a new coaching staff and go to a Super Bowl. But that's what the expectations are in Denver. And I've been to uh, Colorado a couple times this year. And that's what the fans in Colorado are expecting. But it's also what NFL media is expected. I keep seeing uh, Denver Super Bowl predictions from uh, social media, NFL social media people, not just Denver fans. Uh, But these are really high expectations. And the logic is Peyton Manning came to Denver year one. They went to a Super Bowl. But the Peyton Manning situation and the Russell Wilson situation, unfortunately, aren't really the same. And just to recap the three things I don't like about the Denver Broncos, and again, all three of these are combined with being in the brutal AFC West, uh, you have offensive line concerns, uh, the inexperienced coaching staff, and the very high uh, Super Bowl bust expectations. Now, let's take a look at the Denver Broncos schedule. I go over the yearly win total odds, and then I reveal if I'm going to put action down on the Denver Broncos. Uh, the first thing I noticed about the Denver Broncos schedule is the final six games. Uh, that the, the final six games, is that's a, that's a brutal stretch. Uh, however, uh, the first 11 games of the season are extremely favorable for the Denver Broncos. Uh, week one in Seattle, smart move by the NFL, making this a Monday night game. Then uh, the Broncos get the, the next two games at home. Then uh, the, the NFL schedule makers gave some real treats uh, to the to the Broncos here. First off, uh, a week six, a Monday night game at uh, the Chargers. Uh, the week before, week five, they play uh, at home on Thursday uh, against the Colts. Now, the Chargers, week five, play at Cleveland on Sunday. So even though it's a road game, uh, they're going to get a couple extra days to prepare for a divisional opponent. That That's a real advantage. Then after the London game, week eight, uh, Denver gets a bye. Uh, By the way, I'm I'm really surprised that not all teams are getting a bye after playing in London. Denver does, uh, so they get a bye before traveling to uh, Tennessee. Now, Tennessee, week nine, has to travel to Kansas City. So Tennessee has a very tough opponent traveling to Kansas City. While Denver has a bye, this is a major advantage uh, for for the Denver Broncos here. Now, again, the last six games are really tough. Uh, you know, you, you travel to Baltimore, then you have Kansas City and Arizona, playoff teams from um, the year previous, and then you end the season at L.A., 
at Kansas City before the final game of the season. You host the Chargers, which could very well be for uh, playoffs could be on the line week 18 um, there in Denver. Now, the yearly win total odds are 10, and both Caesars and Barstool have it at negative 10 for both, which means you have to wager $110 to win 100, which is which is standard for those of you uh, who don't do uh, a lot of sports betting. That's standard, uh, which means that action is being bet on both the over and the under by the general betting public. Now, I don't like betting on first-time head coaches, but I, I could probably make an exception here. The Denver Broncos is a team I'm really going to monitor uh, between now and the start of the season. And the reason why is I really like the under, but the schedule is very favorable. And here's the drill. Let's take a look again here and let's look at this schedule. I could easily see a 3-0 and start uh, to the season. You know, at Seattle, two, two home games. Then I, I think they're going to win against the Jets in Jacksonville and London, all right? So that's five wins right there. Um, even though at Tennessee's a tough game, Tennessee travels to Kansas City week nine. So even though it's a tough road game, I could see Denver winning that game. And then the next two games, home against the, uh, the Raiders at Carolina, I can see at least one win out of those. So before that six-game stretch, um, the first 11, I could see anywhere from six to eight wins. Uh, and actually wouldn't surprise me if Denver is six and two or maybe even seven and one before the bye. I mean, let's just say six and two, then all I need after the bye is one out of the next three to get to seven and four. And then at seven and four, you got that brutal six six game schedule, which Denver only has to go three and three in order to hit ten. So ten would be a push. This is pretty risky to bet on. Now Barstool has a, an interesting option currently uh, that you can bet on Denver to make the playoffs, and no is plus one fifteen. So I, I wager one hundred dollars, I win one fifteen. I actually do like that bet. And there are some alternate bet lines. Uh, if 10 and a half becomes available, or I might do an alternate bet line with 11, uh, that might be the bet here. Bottom line, I do like the under, but the schedule makes this a really, really tough bet. Now, before the season starts, I reveal all my yearly uh, win total bets. Uh, but I am going to put some action on Denver. I'm just not sure if it's going to be under 10 or if it's going to be an alternate uh, bet, bet line or if I just bet on them to miss the playoffs, which I'm sorry, Broncos fans, I think you're going to do. Now, this is my opinion, but I really want to hear from you. What do you think? Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think the Broncos are going to do in uh, 2022. And if you haven't already, Hit that subscribe button, like the video, and ring the bell. That way you're notified every time I come out with a new video. Tomorrow, I am breaking down the Seattle Seahawks. So I will see you tomorrow.